Did you hear about the sun going on vacation? No? Well, it's taking a short break on April 8th, 2024 to allow a little thing we call an eclipse to occur. Now, an eclipse is a rather fascinating celestial event where the moon steps into the limelight, quite literally, blocking out the sun for a brief period of time. It's like the universe's very own game of hide and seek, with the moon playing the ultimate prankster. This cosmic spectacle, happening right in our backyard, is a wonder to behold. It's a time when day turns into night and the stars decide to make a midday appearance. And while these occurrences might sound a tad dramatic, it's all part of the grand cosmic dance that's been going on for billions of years. So mark your calendars, folks, because the sun's taking a day off. Now, the eclipse has been a source of many wild theories. From solar flares to Project Blue Beam, let's debunk some myths. First up, solar flares. These explosive bursts of energy can indeed occur during an eclipse, but fear not. Our Earth is wrapped in a protective magnetic field that shields us from most of their harmful effects. So while a solar flare during the eclipse might make for a spectacular light show, it's unlikely to cause any significant disruptions. Then, we have the Project Blue Beam conspiracy theory, which suggests a false flag alien invasion to usher in the New World Order. Sounds like a thrilling sci-fi movie plot, doesn't it? But realistically, orchestrating such a grand illusion with everyone now knowing and expecting this to one day happen would probably not achieve the effect that it is counting on from the public. Next, we have the concept of a directed energy weapon being used during the eclipse. While such weapons do exist, using one during an eclipse would be, well, pretty pointless. The cover of darkness isn't necessary for these weapons to operate, and there's no strategic advantage to deploying one during an eclipse. Let's move on to how water is affected by eclipses. Some believe that the gravitational pull during an eclipse could lead to tidal anomalies or even affect our bodies, given that we're about 60% water. But the reality is, the gravitational effects of an eclipse are minuscule and wouldn't noticeably affect water bodies, much less our bodies. Lastly, there's the fear of electromagnetic energy pulses. While these pulses can indeed wreak havoc on electrical systems, they're typically man-made, not naturally occurring phenomena from eclipses. And our electrical grid is designed to withstand such events, so it's unlikely to go down due to the eclipse. So rest assured, chances of any of these phenomena happening are as slim as spotting a unicorn in your backyard. Ever heard of the saying, it's not the end of the world? Well, it applies to our electrical grid too. Let's talk some more about electromagnetic energy pulses. Now these are usually man-made, not from eclipses, and they can potentially disrupt our electrical grid. Picture this, an invisible wave of energy sweeping across the planet and causing a cascade of power outages. Sounds like something out of a movie, right? But here's the thing, while it's theoretically possible, it's highly unlikely. Why, you ask? Well, first off, it's important to remember that electromagnetic energy pulses are not a natural byproduct of solar eclipses. They're typically the result of nuclear detonations or specially designed devices. So, unless someone's planning to set off a nuke during the eclipse, which, let's face it, is highly improbable, we can pretty much rule out that scenario. Moreover, our electrical grid is more robust than you might think. It's designed to withstand a variety of disturbances, including those caused by solar flares and other natural phenomena. And while it's not entirely impervious to damage, the likelihood of a total widespread blackout caused by an electromagnetic energy pulse is extremely low. In fact, electrical grids around the world have weathered many a solar eclipse without so much as a flicker. From Europe to Asia, North America to Australia, the lights have stayed on, even as the moon has passed in front of the sun. Now, I'm not saying we should ignore the possibility entirely. After all, it never hurts to be prepared. But let's not lose sleep over it. Our electrical grid is the result of decades of engineering and planning designed to keep us powered up through all sorts of conditions. So as we approach the eclipse, let's focus on the spectacle in the sky and not the unlikely scenario of our lights going out. Remember folks, a little darkness never hurt anyone, but chances are we won't have to worry about that. Now, let's switch gears a bit and delve into some biblical interpretations of the eclipse. 
The Book of Exodus, the Bible, recounts a fascinating tale where Egypt was submerged in three days of darkness, a divine punishment bestowed upon the Pharaoh for refusing to free the Israelites. This has often been linked to solar eclipses by those seeking correlations between celestial phenomena and biblical events. However, it's crucial to remember that a solar eclipse, even a total one like the one we're anticipating this April, lasts for a few minutes at most, not days. So the three days of darkness mentioned in Exodus is not something that could be physically replicated by a natural solar eclipse. Now, interestingly enough, this upcoming eclipse is set to take the exact opposite path as the 2017 eclipse over the New Madrid earthquake fault. Some might ponder whether this could trigger an earthquake, creating a real-life correlation between the eclipse and seismic activity. However, it's important to note that while this is an intriguing thought, scientists have found no evidence to support a direct connection between eclipses and earthquakes. Moving on to the New Testament, we find the book of Revelations speaking about the opening of the sixth seal. This event is said to cause a great earthquake, the sun to become black as sackcloth, and the moon to turn blood red. Some interpret this as a prophecy of a cataclysmic eclipse event. While the imagery is indeed evocative and chilling, it's important to understand that these predictions do not have an exact time frame for them happening. Also, the sun turning black could be seen as a metaphor for dark times, not necessarily a total eclipse. And as far as we know, earthquakes and eclipses don't have a direct correlation. So, when we look at these biblical interpretations, it's clear that they are steeped in symbolic language and narrative structures of their time. They provide rich food for thought and can make for intriguing discussions, but they shouldn't be taken as literal forecasts of astronomical events. Remember, the upcoming eclipse is a natural and predictable event. It's a celestial spectacle that has been accurately calculated by astronomers. It should not be taken as a sign of impending doom or divine wrath. So, while the Bible has its share of dark tales, they're hopefully not about to come true this April. Now, moving on from biblical darkness to interstellar collisions, let's talk about Planet X or Planet 9 depending on who you're talking to, Nibiru and Zechariah Stitchin's Planet 12. First up, Planet X or Planet 9 is a planet proposed by some scientists to exist in the outer solar system. They argue that its gravitational influence could explain some of the peculiarities in the orbits of far-out objects. But here's the thing, it's only recently been thought to actually exist, and though it seems to be large and has an irregular path, it's thought to be many times further from the Sun than Pluto. So that's a no on the collision course. Next we have Nibiru, a supposed planet that's a central part of a doomsday theory. This theory suggests that Nibiru is on a collision path with Earth. But here's the kicker. If such a massive object were heading our way, astronomers would have spotted it a long time ago. So again, no imminent celestial collisions to worry about this April. Finally, we arrive at Zechariah Stitchin's Planet 12. Stitchin, an author and pseudoscientist, claimed that ancient Sumerian texts spoke of a mysterious Planet 12, home to the Anunnaki, an advanced extraterrestrial race. According to Stitchin, the Anunnaki visited Earth thousands of years ago and had a hand in the creation of humanity. But here's where we bring you back to Earth. Stitching's interpretations of Sumerian texts have been widely criticized and dismissed by scholars. There's no concrete evidence supporting his claims. So while these theories make for great conversation, even with talk of them all possibly being the same planet, the chances of us colliding with another planet or being overtaken by the Anunnaki during the eclipse are, let's just say, astronomically low. That said, it's always fun to explore the mysteries of our universe and the theories they spawn. After all, who doesn't love a good space story? So, no need to put on your space helmets just yet, folks. Remember, with great celestial events come great crowds of stargazers. Now let's shift our focus to the terrestrial side of things. Our little towns and cities are about to become the stage for a cosmic ballet, and that means a surge of visitors, all eager to witness the spectacle of the April 8th, 2024 eclipse. Yes, folks, it's not just the moon that's going to be in transit. People from all over will flock to the best viewing spots, 
and he turning our quiet streets into bustling hubs of excitement. Now this could mean a few challenges, increased traffic, crowded services, and of course the potential strain on our local emergency personnel. So what's the best way to prepare for this influx of Eclipse enthusiasts? Well, first and foremost, it's about planning. Make sure you have all your essentials stocked up well in advance. And by essentials, we're talking about everything from food and water to your favorite brand of coffee. Because let's be honest, no one wants to grapple with Eclipse-induced caffeine withdrawal. Now, you might have heard that the National Guard is being called to certain areas. This might sound alarming, but there's no cause for concern. Their role is simply to assist with crowd control and ensure that everyone can enjoy the eclipse safely. So if you see uniformed personnel around, give them a wave. They're here to help. And remember, preparation doesn't mean panic. This influx of visitors is temporary. Once the moon has completed its dance across the sun, things will return to normal. But until then, let's make our guests feel welcome. After all, we're all here for the same reason, to witness an awe-inspiring spectacle that reminds us of our place in this grand universe. So, while the sun's away, the visitors will play. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Now, instead of fearing the eclipse, why not embrace it? The magic of an eclipse is in its rarity, its celestial beauty, and the way it unites us all under the same sun, or in this case, the lack of it. This April 8th, we're not just bystanders to a cosmic event. We're participants in a universal dance that's as old as time itself. Take a moment to marvel at the cosmos, at the grandeur of the universe that we're a part of. This is a chance to witness the solar system at work, a spectacle that, for just a few minutes, transforms our everyday world into something otherworldly. For those of you lucky enough to be in the path of totality, you're in for a treat. When the moon completely obscures the sun, day turns into night, stars appear in the sky, and the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, becomes visible, radiating like a celestial halo. It's a sight that leaves even the most seasoned stargazers awestruck. And if you're not in the path of totality, don't fret. A partial eclipse is a spectacle in its own right. So wherever you are, take a moment to step outside and look up. Remember to protect your eyes, though. Use approved solar viewing glasses or indirect viewing techniques. Capture these moments, take pictures, make videos, share this experience with people across the country and even across the globe. We're all in this together after all. And for those of you who find yourselves a little overwhelmed by the celestial chaos, take a deep breath, relax. This is a natural event, a predictable dance of celestial bodies. It's not a herald of doom or a sign of the end times. It's a reminder of our place in the cosmos, of the wonder and beauty that exists beyond our little blue planet. Remember folks, an eclipse is not a crisis, it's a celestial celebration. So let's celebrate, let's embrace the eclipse, and let's look forward to our next cosmic adventure. So, as we approach the big day, let's keep our cool and our cameras ready. Let's quickly recap the main points we've discussed. We are on the brink of witnessing a celestial marvel, the eclipse on the 8th of April, 2024. It's a natural spectacle, not a harbinger of doom or a cosmic conspiracy. Unlikely phenomena like solar flares, Project Blue Beam, or the use of a directed energy weapon are just that, unlikely. Earth's magnetic field is our trusty shield, and most electromagnetic energy pulses are man-made, not eclipse-induced. The chances of our electrical grid going down due to the eclipse are slim to none. And remember, We've survived power outages before, and we'll do it again if need be. The three days of darkness from Exodus and the opening of the sixth seal in Revelations, while fascinating, are not synonymous with this eclipse. As for the tales of Planet X or 9, Nibiru, and Zechariah Stitchin's Planet 12, well, we can safely say we won't be colliding with any rogue planets or meeting any Anunnaki during the eclipse. Well, hopefully not. Just kidding. And with the influx of visitors to witness the eclipse, it's wise to be prepared. Stock up on essentials and be patient with the extra traffic and potential strains on local resources. The National Guard is stepping in to assist small towns, so let's all be cooperative and make this a memorable event. Embrace the eclipse. It's a rare phenomenon that binds us all in a shared experience. Capture it in photos and videos, not just for yourself, but for those who can't witness it firsthand. Above all, 
Do remember to stay safe, stay prepared, and stay fearless. Life is full of curveballs, or in this case, celestial bodies aligning in a spectacular display. And before we sign off, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on embracing life's unexpected events with courage and preparedness. And remember folks, the only thing to fear during an eclipse is running out of popcorn.